All right, so we are just going to be looking at simplifying and evaluating some indices. So first of all, our learn goal is we're going to recall the index laws, right, which um, let's just have a little exhibit here. Okay, so we've got the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth index law. And so I'm just going to go over the assumption that we've looked over those before. So here we've got example number one where we can see we've got this big expression and it just says simplify. All right, so first of all, you can't just follow the order of operations. I see bombast. So I'm going to deal with this expression on the right hand side first. Okay, so just expand that bracket there where that two more or less gets slapped onto the power of every single term, numerator and denominator of the bracket. So we'll just keep simplifying. Okay, and so we'll put division of fractions. So I'm just gonna flip that second fraction and multiply. Okay, and so since I've got two fractions being multiplied together here, I'm just going to bring all the terms together following the first index law. So numerator together and denominator together. Okay, and then just finishing off using the second index law, where because I've got division of terms, I am just going to subtract the powers, leaving me with I have eight divided by sorry four divided by eighty. I've got one over twenty. Okay, and then a to the power of four, b to the power of four, leaving me with just a to the power of four, b to the power of four over 20. Okay, that's fully simplified down. An example here, if we've got for, simplify the following numerical expression. Okay, again, we're still gonna be using our indices here. However, since it is a numerical expression, we more or less just need to treat the numbers as if they were just a's and b's. First problem is though, is we've got a three, an 18 and a 6. Uh, what we need to do is simplify those base numbers into more or less their smallest form. And so I'd use prime factorization. 18 is 9 times 2, and 9 is just 3 times 3. So it's just 3 squared times by 2. And I know that 6 is equal to 3 times by 2. So I can take the expression here and just rewrite it. Okay, so instead of writing 18, I'm going to write 3 squared times by 2. Okay, instead of writing 18, I'm going to write 3 squared times by 2 because it's the same thing. I'm just getting the base numbers to be the same. Okay, all to the power of n plus 1 over, and instead of 6 here, I'm going to have 3 times 2. Okay, and then here I'm um, I see two terms, one on the numerator, one on the denominator with some brackets. I'm just going to simplify it out using the same index laws as we used in the first example. Okay, and so here we see, well, we've got threes and twos as base numbers. Um, on, the, on the numerator, I've got two terms, this guy here and this guy here. Okay, I'm going to bring those terms together. But before I do that, I'm going to simplify. Okay, and then bring those two, three terms together. Okay, and now here I've got numerator, denominator. I can just use the second index law to simplify this here. So I'm going to take the terms, the terms with a base of three, and I'm going to subtract the power. And then with the number two, I'm going to subtract that power. Okay, that's going to become three to the power of three n plus four, okay, because minus negative two and then multiplied by two to the power of negative two n plus three. All right, last little thing that we probably could do is we probably just write as three to three n plus four, 
multiplied by two to have three minus two in there. Okay, and then so here we've got an expression to evaluate, all right? Um, I'm just gonna more or less take this power and hit it to both the numerator and the denominator. So I've got 16 to the power of negative three on two over 49 to the power of negative three on two. Now, since the numerator and the denominator have both got negative powers, you wanna put the numerator term on the denominator and the denominator term on the numerator to make them both positive. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, and so here we can see we've got a fractional indice. What I'm gonna do is I'm just, I'm just gonna split it up. Okay, if I've got three on two, that's the same as just having one plus a half. Okay, so I can pretty much do the reverse of the first index law, where I can just write this as 49 to the power of one multiplied by 49 to the power of a half. Okay, because if I was to bring those powers together, I would add them, so I'd get three on two. I'm just doing the reverse of it, and so this is because we can simplify it a bit easier. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the numerator, denominator. All right, and we know the power of a half is just the square root. So this is 49 times by the square root of 49 over 16 times by the square root of 16, which is just 49 times seven over 16 times by four. And that's just gonna give us 343 over 64, 64. And this fraction is reducible, so pretty much done.